All right. Well, thanks to everyone who's joined already. Um, we'll give people a few minutes to um, log in, but we'll get started shortly. Um, we will be starting in one or two uh, minutes, just giving uh, folks a little more time to log in. Thank you for your patience. All right, um, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Becca Rabin and I'm with the City of San Francisco's Department of the Environment. Um, I'm really glad you could join us for this webinar. We have some incredible resources available to us from our local government and partner organizations. Um, just quick housekeeping, you can put your questions into the Q&A box in the toolbar and they'll be answered there or we'll read them out at the end. Um, we're recording this webinar and we'll share the recording afterwards. Today, you will get to hear about Clean Power SF from SFUC and why the city is promoting electrification, electric vehicles from Ride and Drive Clean, and home electrification from a Bayron Home Energy Advisor. I'll now hand things off to Jackie Randazzo with SFPUC. Thanks, Becca. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. As Becca mentioned, my name is Jackie Randazzo, and I am a senior communication specialist with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Thanks so much for joining us today. So the SFPUC is San Francisco's clean energy utility. Oh, I'm just going to try to, there we go, advance the slides. Perfect. Um, so the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission is San Francisco's clean energy utility. We have two customer serving electricity programs, Hetch Hetchy Power and Clean Power SF. Hetch Hetchy Power serves municipal buildings, muni, schools, affordable housing, and much more. Hetch Hetchy Power is generated from clean hydroelectricity from the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir and solar energy from arrays around the city. Clean Power SF is the city's community choice energy program. We offer San Francisco residents and businesses a choice in where their energy comes from. Clean Power SF sources energy from renewable sources like wind and solar. The program serves about 385,000 customer accounts in San Francisco. So you're probably one of our customers, whether you realize it or not. So on your next pg and &E bill, look for our line item or name on that first page. Okay, I'm gonna try to advance the next slide here. 
Okay, great. So I'm going to focus on Clean Power SF today, and Clean Power SF is supporting the city going all electric. First, we have a target of achieving 100% renewable electricity for all of our customers by 2025, which is actually five years ahead of our previous schedule. We also have several other initiatives that I'll go into, including our super green service, and special rates for rooftop solar and electric vehicles. Just waiting for my, my slide to advance here. Perfect. So if you were looking for the easiest climate action this month, this is it. If you're a Clean Power SF residential customer, you can upgrade to 100% renewable energy for only about $3 more per month. No solar on your roof, you know, required. You'll not only be ensuring all of your electricity for your home is generated from solar and wind, but you'll also be supporting new clean energy projects in the Bay Area and California. You'll help fight climate, climate change and ensure a healthy community and planet for future generations. It only takes five minutes to sign up and you can sign up at cleanpowersf.org slash supergreen. Now I'm gonna go into a little bit for our rooftop solar and electric vehicle rates for our customers. We support our customers with special rates for EVs and solar on their roofs. For our rooftop solar customers, we actually pay three times more for extra energy compared to other utilities. And for our residential EV owners, we have an off-peak electric rate that is 20% cheaper than the residential rate during the day. So you can charge your vehicle overnight at a discount. If you have questions about what rate is best for you, we're happy to chat with you and you can contact us at cleanpowersf at sfwater.org. And that is it from my section. I'm gonna pass it back to Becca. All right, thank you, Jackie. I'd now like to introduce Annika Osborne with Ride and Drive Clean. Hi, I'm Annika Osborne. Uh, thanks so much, Becca. Um, I'm with Cool the Earth, an environmental nonprofit with a mission to reduce carbon emissions and air pollution. We believe that walking, biking, taking public transportation, and carpooling, preferably in electric cars, are the best options. And with Ride and Drive Clean, we focus on educating and engaging people around zero emissions vehicles like e-bikes and electric cars because the rapid increase of electric vehicles will improve air quality and slow global warming. Uh, again, I wanna thank uh, Becca Rabin and the San Francisco Department of Environment for sponsoring today's webinar and inviting me to talk about switching to driving electric. Uh, trying to advance the slide here. Um, okay, I, I can do that if it's not okay. working for you. Thank you. Uh, so here's our agenda um, for today. Uh, we'll be talking about the benefits of driving electric, EV incentives, current and coming EVs, uh, EV charging overview, uh, and at the end we'll have some, you know, I'm happy to take any questions about, about EVs. Next. So there are many benefits to driving electric. Do you remember those blue skies and clean air that we had about two years ago when everybody stopped driving? I can't believe that was two years ago. Um, in California, our passenger vehicles are the single largest source, source of GHG emissions, representing about 50% of our individual carbon footprint in the Bay Area. So when you switch from a gas car to an EV and plug into clean energy, you're taking impactful climate action by reducing carbon emissions and air pollution, both which disproportionately impact equity priority communities. And it's a little more fun to drive electric. You can save time, money, and improve your driving experience when you go EV. Next. Uh, we know that cost is one of the biggest barriers to driving electric. And although early EV drivers paid a high premium for electric cars, today's EV drivers often save money. This chart shows one example, but based on a February 2022 study, the total lifetime cost of 
Uh, but ownership of an EV is about $4,700 less than that of a comparable gas car. And the cost difference is likely to increase as more EVs come to market and as battery prices continue to fall over the next couple of years. Uh, over the vehicle's lifetime, it costs much less to fuel an electric car, um, especially now. Um, fueling a gas car can be two to five times more expensive than fueling an EV. And maintenance costs are 40% lower for EVs. There are basically like 10 moving parts in electric vehicles, so they're very simple, uh, simple cars. You know, it's basically adding windshield wiper fluid and rotating your tires. That's basically the maintenance that you're doing uh, you know, with your EV. Uh, and because of the uh, reduced cost of EV batteries, we're seeing the sticker price of many EVs is now lower than that of comparable, comparable gas cars. And then there are the rebates and incentives available for around $10,000, which can further bring down the cost of driving electric. Next. So let's talk gas prices. So the charts above compare how the price of gasoline, the blue line, has changed relative to the price of electricity, the yellow line, over time in San Francisco and in the country. Uh, they are measuring here the charge or the change in the cost of adding 100 miles of range from February 2019 through February 2022. Uh, according to this chart here in the Bay Area, it costs $18 for the average Car, a gas car to go 100 miles, probably a little bit more. This was February 2022, and a lot has happened uh, since then. So um, it's more like $20 if gas to, to drive 100 miles, if gas costs $5 a gallon. So probably even a little higher than that, as compared to $10 to drive the average EV 100 miles. And this, of course, depends upon where and when you are charging. Um, since we have these great time of use charging plans where you can really save money. I know for myself, when I charge at the public station up at uh, my civic center, I'm paying $4 to go 100 miles. Uh, so it's a little bit different depending upon where you live, if you are where you're charging and um, you know if you have solar and all this. Uh, so in addition to the lower cost of electricity, it's typically more stable as you can see in this chart as well. And as we've uh, we've just been noticing in the last month and a half. Okay, next. So let's take a look at the incentives available for new EVs. You can save up to ten thousand two hundred and fifty dollars with rebates and tax credits for a fully electric car, and about half of that amount for a plug-in hybrid. While the incentives listed on this slide are for new cars only, some income qualifying rebates and grants are available for new and used cars. Um, you do have to apply for those in advance of getting your car. Uh, there's the California Clean Fuels Reward, which you receive at point of sale, so super easy. The California Clean Vehicle Rebate does have some income qualifications and vehicle price limits. Uh, the federal tax credits are for tax liability when you file your taxes. Um, and actually, some EV manufacturers will pass on, will take the, the tax credit themselves and pass on the savings if you lease the car. So they'll take that MSRP and uh, take $7,500 off of the MSRP when they're calculating your lease rate. So that could really help get you know, a good lease price. Um, the clean air vehicle decal gives EV drivers access to the HOV lane as a single passenger for three years, which can greatly cut down on commute times. This is why many commuters lease their, their cars because it only lasts for three years, then they get a new lease, they get a new decal, and they keep enjoying that HOV lane. Uh, the savings calculator listed will help you find out exactly which incentives you qualify for, uh, and we'll send this to you in a follow-up email as well. I'll throw it in the chat at the end of my presentation too. I recommend everybody check that out because you might see some special uh, discounts where you live or where you work. Uh, next. So some, ooh, okay. I have a different slide there, but that's okay. Uh, so 2022 is a super is super exciting because there are so many new and different EVs out there. There's something for everyone. Most fully electric EVs offer 200 to 300 miles of range, and some will go even farther on one charge. This means that you can go from San Francisco to Tahoe with just a 15 minute charging break. With some cars, you don't even have to stop at all on your way home as you're. Um, going you know, downhill so much with the regenerative braking. 
Um, you're actually charging your battery as you're driving and you won't have to stop to charge at all. You can also go from San Francisco to Sacramento and back without having to stop to charge. This was really not the case five years ago and EV technology is advancing very quickly. Next. Uh, so there are 30 battery electric vehicles that run only on electricity on the market today, including trucks. All electric EVs range from 28,000 to over $100,000, most with over 200 miles of range. This is very exciting. When I started doing this work three years ago, there were only 10 EVs available. Uh, some of these cars come standard with all wheel drive and it's an add on for other models. Um, for all electric EVs, you may qualify for incentives up to 10,250 or 13,750 if your income qualifies. Next. Uh, so if you cannot find an all electric car that works for you, there are many plug-in hybrids out there. If you plug in a PHEV every day, as we call them, you may be able to cover your commute driving all electric and you can save the gas tank for road trips. Uh, I have a friends with PHEVs who have never taken them to a gas station. They just drive completely on electricity. Um, these are a great transition car for people who are hesitant to go all electric. And some friends, um, some friends uh, who ended up getting plug-in hybrids because they were a little bit unsure. They wish they, they had gone fully electric because they realized how easy it is to charge, especially with the long um, ranges available on most fully electric vehicles. It's important if you get a PF to plug in every day so you can drive electric as much as possible. A little, some more information here on the slide that you can take a look at. Okay, next. So EVs have been around for just about 10 years. And because EV technology is so new, people have tended to lease their EVs. So there are now used EVs available on the market and EVs are coming off their leases all the time. Used EVs can be more affordable, but on the downside, there are no rebates for, for used EVs unless your income qualifies. Uh, lower range used EVs can work out great um, you know, for commuting, driving around town, or as you know, a second car. You may not need a long range uh, car, two long range cars in your household. In my personal case, uh, we're a household of four, uh, four drivers and uh, we have a long range EV. We have a Tesla Model 3 that we use uh, for road trips. And then we bought a used Volkswagen e-Golf uh, for a really great price uh, that helped us. You know, That's the one that my kids take, they're teenagers, they drive to school with that car. It only has an 80 mile range, but it was really affordable. And um, we can still go, we live up in San Rafael, we can go to the city and back, to Berkeley and back, to Stinson and back. And it's really enough as a second car. Really fun to drive, super peppy too. Uh, next. So people get worried about charging, but many people do 90% of their charging at home or at work. Uh, there are two options for charging at home if you have an outlet. So the first is an easy, no cost solution and it is ample for most people. You just plug in the charger that comes with the vehicle into a standard 120 volt outlet. It gives you from uh, 25 to 40, 40 miles of charge in eight hours, which is usually overnight uh, with the time of use EV plan, just enough to replenish your battery. People in the Bay Area drive an average of 23 miles a day. So this great solution works out well for most people. And I just wanna note that it's a little different um, very different charging an EV compared to filling up a gas car. With the gas car, you might wait till your gas tank goes down to like an eighth you know, of your fuel left and then charge it all, all the way. But with EVs, it's more of a like topping off experience. So I plug my EV in every day and I have it set to start charging at midnight. Actually now I have it set to 9 a.m. because I have solar and I wanna use that energy that's uh, generated for my solar panels. And I just set it to charge to 80% on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm just basically going from 60 to 80% every day, just kind of topping it off. So it's a little bit different. Um, if you drive more than 50 miles a day, you may wanna purchase a home charging station for level two charging. You'll get about 25 miles in an hour. So you can easily get a full charge overnight if that's something that you would need, which is kind of rare. Uh, for both of these options, the first step is to consult with an electrician to check out your electrical panel, just to make sure you're all set up and you know you don't wanna like blow a circuit or anything like that. Um, and then charging away from home, there are many level two public chargers available. So you can charge when you're at work 
uh, around town in parking garages and at many shopping centers. So for example, when I go to the farmer's market locally, I plug in my car, I charge for an hour and pick up 25 miles of range. That costs me a dollar. So really easy, really nice to have those available, you know, all around. Um, uh, when, but so when you're on a road trip though, you'll want a fast charge with a level three charger, which is the fastest charging available. It's important to note that different EVs charge at different speeds. So if you are going to get an EV and you're planning to go on a lot of road trips or use public charging as your main source of electricity, you'll definitely want to consider that. Um, some of these new EVs that are just out this year charge 60 miles in five minutes or will go from 10% of your charge to 80% in just 18 minutes. So that's quite remarkable. We're not quite at a gas station model yet, but you know, enough time to plug your EV in, get something to drink, use the restroom, and then uh, come back to your car and you'll be ready to go again. Uh, next. So there are several EV charging solutions for people who live in apartments and condos and more solutions are on their way. So if a charging station is not available, people um, charge at home by plugging into a standard 120 volt outlet if it's available and allowed. I realize that it's not a, some people actually have access to an outlet, but their property managers don't allow them to charge because it would be unfair because they are sharing the electric bill with other tenants. But we have these new great smart outlets that are an inexpensive charging solution that also handles billing. So again, this is a great option in that situation. You would use your app on your phone to actually activate the charging and you get billed through your app so that the people who are using the electricity are paying for it. Um, there's also, um, if you already have a 240 volt outlet um, set up for your dryer, you could use a smart splitter and, and um, definitely check with your electrician before doing that, but it's basically a safety device that will um, help you share that outlet. A lot of people charge at work. This is an excellent solution in California. We have plentiful solar energy, sometimes so much that we have to turn off the solar uh, the energy flowing into the grid. Um, we just have so much. So it's great to be able to charge your EV during the day when the sun is shining. Um, a lot of people use public uh, charging stations. Uh, level two chargers can work if you're able to charge for a few hours a day. And fast charging will get you about 70% of your battery charge in just 30 minutes. Currently, 90% of Californians now live within 15 miles of an Electrify America ultra fast charger um, and Biden's infrastructure plan, which was passed last year, includes 500,000 new fast charging stations in the US. So if there's not one near you now, there's one coming this way um, with the California Blueprint program. Uh, uh, we just passed $6.1 billion of funding for EV initiatives. So we know that, um, we know that uh, there will be more charging solutions available. EV match is something to look into if you're in this situation. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network for charging. And if you don't have, um, have EV charging in your apartment or condo, advocate, uh, you know, have your to have your property owner either install 120 volt outlets near the parking lot or parking garage, or to install an actual bank of level two chargers um, that are easily accessible. Next. So uh, once you start driving electric, it's ideal to charge your EV from rooftop solar. If you have that available, there's a federal tax credit available this year for 26% of the install cost. It's a great feeling to charge your car from the electricity that you generate from your own roof. And when you go electric, you can choose a clean energy plan from your local uh, electricity provider like Clean Power SF, uh, like their super green option. So you're charging your EV with clean energy from the sun and the wind. If you have your own meter, you can sign up for clean energy. And if not, you can advocate uh, for, to your property manager to opt for clean energy. In addition, as Jackie mentioned, your utility may offer, you know, does offer a special reduced EV or time of use rate so that you pay less for electricity during certain times of the day. In San Francisco, the off peak time when you want to charge is from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., which works out great for people who are commuting to work in the day. Next. So taking a road trip is getting simpler all the time. Thousands of public charging sites provide fast charging and using apps like PlugShare, it's easy to plan a trip and find chargers along the way. 
So you can map out your trip on, uh, on PlugShare before you head, on the, head out on your trip so you know exactly where you're gonna stop and do your fast charging. I like to do that because I like to see, oh, I'm gonna have lunch there, what restaurants are available there, or what shop, you know, what shopping options do I have next to the charging stations? Um, and then when I'm on the road trip, I'll use PlugShare to find chargers nearby. Um, so Electrify America, EVGo, and ChargePoint are all, um, all offer app and card-based solutions. So you just tap your app to the charging station, charge and go. Um, with public charging, we recommend that you practice a few times locally before you take your first road trip. You do have to enter in your credit card and you wanna make sure this is all set up for you um, to have a smooth road trip. Um, and next, um, ooh, okay, back to that one. Sorry, I added it in a different order. So this is a really exciting slide. I'm so excited about this new technology that's coming, uh, coming into play here. So some people are worried about buying EVs because they won't be able to power them during power outages. But with new inverters, EVs can actually help during a power shutdown. There are a few inverter solutions available now so you can power up small appliances using your EV battery and the technology around inverters is advancing very quickly. So this little box, the red box over there on the slide, uh, you can plug in this inexpensive 300 watt inverter into the accessory port of your EV. Um, and power up small appliances like cell phones, laptops, LED lights. We lost our power up here in Marin for five days, two years ago. I plugged that in, put in an extension cord, and I was able to power up our living room with lots of string lights. To, so we had a little bit of comfort during this time. But while this low wattage inverter cannot power up your refrigerator, some new EVs that are out this year, like the Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ioniq 5 can is they have a higher wattage bi-directional uh, battery. So you can see right there in the image, you can actually plug in uh, an extension cord really right into the charging cable. And then you can hook it up to your, plug in your refrigerator and you can, you know, you won't lose your food if there's a power outage. This is just really excellent technology. And we, uh, there's the Ford F-150 Lightning is coming out later this year. It offers the technology to connect your home's electrical panel to power up your entire home. It acts like a generator. You can also power up your electric um, appliances when you're out doing work on the road uh, by just plugging in to your EV's battery. So as I mentioned, the techn technology around inverters is advancing quickly, and there are several companies working on vehicle to home energy management systems. So just imagine when you come home at the end of the day, when electricity is expensive and not so clean, you can power up your home with the energy that's stored in your EV battery, and then power up your EV battery at midnight or 11 p.m. when there's ample clean and expensive energy. Um, okay, next. Let's see. So um, Ride and Drive Clean is ready to help you go electric. We offer weekly Zoom webinars, EV 101s for EV bas basics and EV 102s to help new drivers transition smoothly. We also do specific workshops specifically for apartment and condo dwellers to help figure out the best charging solutions. We also do some, uh, some webinars about how to save money by driving electric. We have one coming up next week, bilingual. Um, we also have a robust website highlighting available and coming EVs and e-bikes, a how-to EV section, including steps to driving electric, uh, buying and driving guides and a calendar of events. We host EV car shows, EV and e-bike shows, so consumers can check out new and some of the mo more popular EVs out there um, and talk to EV owners about driving electric. We just had one this weekend. We had about 200 people up in San Rafael this weekend. We have one, two next week coming up, one in Novato and one in Mill Valley. Um, you can sign up for those on our website. And finally, twice a year, we partner with Cartelligent, which is a car concierge service uh, to offer EV discount campaigns at the end of last year, when we ran our campaign, we helped 100 individuals switch to driving electric, and the discounts were between $750 and $2,500, in addition to the other government and manufacturing incentives. And I want to say right now, it's a little bit tough to go EV right at this moment. There's an, uh, an inventory shortage due to lots of pandemic delays. Um, 
but we're hoping that, that, that things open up a little bit by the end of the year. We're hoping to offer one of these EV discount campaigns in the late fall and another one next spring. And we hope that there will be ample inventory of lots of new, exciting um, EVs. Um, so we really need to get off fossil fuels as soon as possible. I hope you'll pledge to make your next car electric and sign up with Ride and Drive Clean so we can help you go electric. I'm gonna drop a couple links in the chat so you'll have the opportunity to pledge to make your next car electric and sign up for updates for all things EVs. Thanks again to Becca and the San Francisco Department of the Environment team for your partnership. All right, thank you, Annika. Um, we have a number of questions in both Q&A and chat. So if you could um, look at those and respond um, and just folks, if you can put questions in the Q&A rather than the chat, it's easier for us to see what's been answered and what hasn't. Um, now we will transition over uh, to Tony Jung, uh, a Bayren Home Plus Energy Advisor to talk about home electrification. Okay, thank you, Becca. How do I sound? All right, let's advance forward. Oh, sorry, Tony, we're not hearing you if you're speaking. Oh, somehow I got unmuted. So, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about, you know, who's Bayren uh, and some more about us, as well as uh, why you want to consider going electric and how you can get started with that. Would you like the next slide? Yes, please. Please advance to the next slide. All right, so Bayren, uh, it is a collaboration of the nine county governments in the Bay Area, where San Francisco is part of that. And we uh, help implement incentive programs, rebates for all Bay Area residents for that. And you can learn more about us at bayren.org. And let's go forward to the next slide. So why do we wanna go electric? What are some of the benefits we need to consider about going electric? So electrifying your home. Next slide. Close to home, the things to think about is indoor air quality. Uh, the EPA did a study of homes and buildings, and they discovered that indoor air quality is two to five times worse than your typical outside air. And we spend most of our time indoors, especially during the pandemic period, but you're at home, for those that go into the office, uh, your children at school. So indoor air quality is worse on indoors. So for young children or people with uh, asthma, uh, it's more problematic for them, especially because young children have smaller bodies and less developed lungs. So indoor air quality is an important thing to think about your home. And what are some of the things that contribute to indoor air, poor indoor air quality? The biggest one is combustion gas appliances, gas cooktops and gas ovens. Those appliances directly combust gas in your kitchen. Those are those combustion gases. So you have carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, nitrous oxides, formaldehydes, uh, all get released during the, cook, the combustion of uh, natural gas. So that is something that directly impacts the air quality in your home. Uh, also older appliances, uh, like a natural draft water heater and old furnaces. Uh, furnaces, as they get old, the heat exchanger could have a slight, develop a slight crack and suddenly the combustion gases, the carbon monoxide, start leaking into the home and start worsening the air quality of your home. All right, next slide. Looking a little bit bigger, regionally, what are issues with gas lines? Well, gas lines could develop leaks in your home. Uh, I mentioned old appliances can sometimes start introducing uh, combustion gases into your home, especially natural draft water heaters. They're notorious for the first five minutes of warming up to spill exhaust into the home before it warms up the flu. But remember, we live in earthquake country. We have two major fault lines in the Bay Area. The US Geological Survey said that in the next 30 years, there's a 62% chance we're going to have a major earthquake of 6.7 or greater. So for those of you who just bought a home, before you pay off your loan, there's gonna be a very high likelihood of a major earthquake in the Bay Area. And so what happens with earthquakes? With older home structures, 
if there's any structural damage, there could be a gas leak. And as we learned from like Loma Prieta or even the 1906 earthquake, what happened? Well, it's caused the greatest destruction, fires. So with a broken gas line, you have an open flame from a, a water heater. That's a combination that can start a fire right after an earthquake starts, just like that picture from Loma Prieta. A lot of those fires were started because of a broken gas line and an open flame nearby, typically a water heater that toppled over. So these are things to consider about the safety of your home. All right, next slide. And let's take a look at the bigger picture. Natural gas, that's a fossil fuel and a potent greenhouse gas. So every time you don't light a flame, it gets, spills a little gas out. Every time you use, uh, you know, turn on that stove, water heater, the furnace, it generates greenhouse gases. Those get trapped in our atmosphere and it accelerates climate change because of the warming of our atmosphere of that trapped heat. So we get extreme weathers, you know, San Francisco is getting warmer, right? Every summer, it seems like. We have droughts, uh, periods of intense rain, and it causes flooding, but then periods of no water. So this is all happening because of the climate shifts that are occurring with all these greenhouse gases getting trapped in our atmosphere. And in San Francisco, more than 82% of San Francisco's carbon emissions are coming from natural gas use in our buildings. So Moving Sorry, away from Tony, that. let me correct that. Um, as it was probably just a typo, but it's 82% of carbon emissions from San Francisco's buildings is mm. attributed to natural gas. Okay, it's attributed to natural gas. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next slide. So these are things to really consider about changes. And another benefit of electrification, and you saw some of those benefits they mentioned in the electric vehicle, but going solar. Putting solar on your rooftop, it's a local and renewable resource. It will help lower your electricity bill now, and you have the ability to do storage. So you can store that for peak usage rates so you can level your bill then. During an emergency, you have power. During a blackout, during maybe a severe earthquake, you have power in your vehicle to use or in a battery. In fact, as you notice, some of the newest cars, the vehicle to load, the ability for a car to have a plug in that you can plug in and literally microwave something on the road, food on the road if you wanted to. That's the power of where things are headed. And soon vehicle to home, vehicle to grid or other things that are coming up down the road. So getting solar, adding solar to your home will give you a lot of flexibility. And this is the time to do it with the federal tax credit still available. And more importantly, it gives you financial stability for your electricity cost. It gives you a stable known rate for many years out by getting your panel sized right for your home. All right, let's look at how to get started with this. Next slide. All right, let's go to the next slide. We have rebate programs that are available to help you do this conversion from natural gas to electricity. There are three programs we're gonna talk about and how each of them can help you uh, get to an electric home. Uh, the program I'm part of is the Bay Ren Home Plus program. It's a utility rebate program. We use participating contractors to get you rebates for insulation, switching from a gas water heater to an electric heat pump water heater. Another program, Tech Clean California, stands for Technology and Equipment Clean Heating. But the Tech program is a statewide incentive that works with the Home Plus program. And you can get benefits from heat, electric heat pump water heaters as well as heat pumps themselves from clean tech. Um, and then lastly, there is a regional program that Clean Power SF is sponsoring the heat pump water heater uh, contractor rebate. So Clean Power SF is also contributing to help get ways to help you switch for that. Those logos you see when you get on our webpage for contractor search, those are the logos you see, those icons will help you find the right contractor that's participating in all these programs because many of our rebates are compatible with each other or stackable. Let's take a look at ahead. The first thing you may want to consider, water heaters. Your gas water heaters today, you can replace it with a heat pump water heater. They can be three to four times more efficient than your old electric water heater or your gas water heater. So this is a great technology to have. We have a thousand dollar rebate from Home Plus to do that. How does this work? It's like your refrigerator, except it works in reverse. It takes the water, heat out of the surrounding environment, so a garage, a downstairs basement, put all the heat out of the environment, put it into the water, 
and it outputs cool dehumidified air. So that actually is a benefit, especially in uh, places like uh, Sunset in San Francisco, where it's kind of damp and cold. Heat pump waters will help dry out that space where it's running. All right, next slide. Let's look at how these uh, rebates can help you. So as I mentioned before, the Home Plus program has $1,000 from converting a gas water heater to an electric heat pump water heater. We have setting up relationships with all the other two programs, the Tech and Clean Power SF's program. So literally you have one application and it will be submitted to all three programs going through Home Plus. For Tech Clean California, they have an $1,100 or $1,800 rebate for heat pump water heaters. It all depends on the size of the water heater you pick. So you can get up to $1,800 from Tech Clean California using one of their participating contractors. And with Tech Clean California, this is only for heat pump water heater upgrades. For upgrading your water heater, they have a bonus incentive of up to $2,800 to help upgrade your electrical panel. So if you're thinking about electrification of your home, consider the water heater first because currently Tech Clean California has a $2,800 rebate that, can, that those participating contractors can offer direct discount to you. And you can then upgrade your panel, let's say it's a 60 or 80 amp panel, up to 200 amps if you need it or expand the space for it to help offset the cost of doing that. So consider that water heater upgrade as part of it and using a tech clean contractor. Uh, and then Clean Power SF, they are sponsoring a re part of a regional heat pump water heater program. You do have to be a Clean Power SF customer. So make sure you check your utility bills to make sure you are. By default, you're automatically enrolled, but you do have the option to opt out. So make sure you don't opt out because those contractors get a thousand dollar incentive for installing heat pump water heaters. And that's a bonus for you because that means they can lower their cost for the project. Let's take a look at an example of how this works. Next slide. All right, for Home Plus, as I mentioned, it's a thousand dollars from us with a qualified heat pump water heater. What's the difference for Tech Clean California? It depends on the size of the water heater. If you install a 50 gallon water heater, they give you $1,100. But if it's greater than 55 gallons, so a 65 or a 75 gallon water heater, they'll give you 1800 back. So to you, there's a total of 2100 or $2,800 available from Home Plus and Tech California. How do you get the rebates? Home Plus will mail you a check for $1,000 after the completion of the project. For Tech Clean California, they pass the incentive or rebate to the contractor. So the way it's structured for Tech Clean California, the tech contractor will give you a discount upfront on their bid to you of either 1100 or 1800 based on the size of your water heater. And here's the bonus that comes from Clean Power SF, it's a program for contractor incentives. You choose a contractor that's participating in all three. The contractor for installing a heat pump water heater will get $1,000 rebated to them. So that means for those contractors, they can offer a significant discount compared to any other contractor out there by offering an addition, you know, up to $1,000, they'll get credit. So they can offer a greater discount. So total rebates available for both homeowner and contractor is $3,100 or $3,800. So that's a great benefit because those contractors who are part of this contractor incentive program can offer a lower cost for you compared to one who's not participating in this contractor incentive program. And if you have a contractor that you work with, that you like working with, or a plumber, we have a referral program. Uh, one of our advisors can post the link in the chat. You get $100 if you refer the contractor and they join our program. So there's a benefit for you and for them to join. And as I mentioned before, a tech clean contractor that can do electrical, you also get $2,800. So we're talking nearly $6,600 of total incentives for your project available for using a contractor that's participating in Home Plus, Tech Clean California, and Clean Power SF's program for that. So consider that as part of a way of moving forward now with that. All right, next slide. Other ones, if we saw some questions floating by, are there other incentives? Yes. As I mentioned before, cooking with a gas stove, it combusts gas immediately in the kitchen. That means your children playing on the floor, you're cooking on the stove in the kitchen. There are combustion gases all over that kitchen coming off the stove when you're, or oven when you're cooking. So you want to turn on the fan to get it out of the house now. But switching to a cooktop 
We have a $300 rebate from Bay Rent. They're efficient, they're clean. You don't have to deal with an open flame. So no risk of loose clothing catching fire. And in fact, on the Bay Rent channel, I think one of the advisors can post it in chat. Uh, clean Power, I'm sorry, SF, SF Environment hosted a cooking show on cooking with an induction cooktop. Uh, chef, uh, it was Chef, I think it was Rochelle. Uh, she uh, demonstrates, she talks about all the type, different types of cooking options, uh, how induction works. So it's a great thing to watch that uh, video. It's on the Bay Rent channel. And just with a quick question, can what pots and pans work with it? The simplest thing is if you have a good magnet, does it stick to the pot? So anything cast iron, the iron core will work with an induction cooktop. If it's clay, uh, if it's aluminum, magnets won't stick. So it won't work for that. Uh, but the nice thing about cooktop uh, you know, induction, it's not hot like the picture you see there. You can put ice cubes and the stove stays relatively cool while the water's boiling next to it. So it's sort of a great thing about that. All right, next one quickly. If you have a gas dryer, instead of the risk of trying to get that gas burning dryer to vent it out of your house, convert it to a, a heat pump clothes dryer. You get a $300 rebate. It doesn't even need to vent outside because you're not burning a combustion gas in your home. So you're not running that risk of that. If that vent line gets broken for some reason, damaged, you're not spilling exhaust into your home or garage from a gas dryer. So it's safety. And just, it's a lot better way because you don't need to vent it outside. All right, next slide. Heating your home, heating and cooling. The newest technology to consider is heat pump technology. This is, picture here is an example of a ductless mini split, but there are ducted versions uh, that are available. So that can be compatible with your existing duct system, but you wanna make sure your duct system is in good condition. The advantage of heat pumps, you can more efficiently heat your home and it can cool your home because we're experiencing sort of warmer weathers in, in San Francisco than in the past. So the ability to have the ability to cool your home is great uh, with these uh, ductless mini splits or even ducted mini splits. You have the ability to zone control. So if you have it hot upstairs, but downstairs is fine, you can just cool the upstairs to make it comfortable when you're up there. All right, next slide. So rebates for heat pumps. We're just getting started uh, with that, but the nice thing about heat pumps, uh, it, it moves heat into the home. It doesn't actually generate heat or create heat because uh, your traditional furnace uses an open flame, a fire to generate the heat that heats your home. It overheats your home typically. So what a heat pump does is it, is it moves heat into the home. So it's moving from outside to inside in heating mode. And then in cooling mode, it's taking heat from inside the house and moving it outside, just like a refrigerator. The nice thing about heat pump is that it does a gradual, more gentle cooling of the home. Uh, conceptually, you can think of it like when you're driving on a freeway. You get the best efficiency when you ramp up speed and you're on cruise control, going at a constant speed. That's what a heat pump does. It does a gradual rise and does a constant running. That's where it's most efficient in its operation and will save you the most energy for that. Uh, a gas furnace, a traditional gas furnace, the way to think of how it works is when it starts up, it's like on your accelerator, flooring the accelerator and going at the highest speed possible. And then once you get up to a certain point, you let off the gas and let the car coast or cruise down to your comfort temperature comfort or your speed in this case. So that gets kind of uncomfortable. And there's a lot of inefficiencies in the ramping up or the starting of the furnace. There's a lot of inefficiencies in that process. So your savings is actually a more constant gradual heating of the home with a heat pump. As mentioned before, it can cool and dehumidify the home. So if you have moisture issues, you can run the, run the heat pump to dehumidify the home and cool it when it gets too warm. And an important part to consider, whether you upgrade now or you upgrade maybe in the future when you have more money available, an important thing is think of your home as like a refrigerator now. What happens if you left the refrigerator door open or the freezer door open? After a couple hours, the ice melts, the ice cream's melted. And you notice the motor of the refrigerator is running really hard to try and keep the home comfortable. So consider the envelope of your home. Whether you have a gas, existing gas furnace, when you upgrade to a heat pump, make sure the envelope of your home is well air sealed and insulated to make sure any heat you're putting in the home stays in the home. And when it's hot, keeps the cool air in your home for that. So keep that in mind as part of electrification of your home is that 
your home with a heat pump is effectively becoming a refrigerator when you're in cooling mode and heat pump mode, you're trying to heat the house. You wanna make sure your house is well air sealed. So not leaving that refrigerator door open, it's well sealed and well insulated for that. All right, next slide. So as I mentioned, the, the incentives for heat pumps are just getting started now. Uh, right now of Home Plus, we have two cases that we can allow for incentive incentives today of $1,000. If you have a centrally ducted furnace with an air conditioner, you can replace that with a ducted heat pump. Or for those in San Francisco that have older homes that have a wall or floor furnace, you can upgrade for $1,000 from Home Plus to a ductless mini split. For that. So those are options for you from Home Plus right now. We are in process of adding more down the road, but we're waiting for additional work papers to complete before we can add these additional incentives. So I think of it like the start of a race. The gates just opened, we're just getting out, and these are our first incentives available to you. Our partner program, uh, Tech Clean California, they have an incentive for heat pumps right now with up to $3,000 as their basic incentive. So you need to have a gas appliance, so a gas furnace. You can qualify using a, a Tech Clean California uh, contractor. And if you happen to have a wall or floor furnace, the bonus here, you get 3,000 from tech and you get 1,000 from home plus for getting rid of that wall or floor furnace. So we are getting compatible uh, toward that. And in the future, so down the road, we are actually gonna be integrating with tech to offer even more capabilities, more incentives. As we expand the types of cases that we can support, as well as the tech in California when they do the integration, we will be enhancing and adding more incentives. So they will change. They're going to be evolving. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, we have advisors that can help you discuss that, what we can, you can do today, if it's a good fit, or even down the road, start planning for that. All right, so let's take a look, uh, wrapping up things. All right, next slide. The energy advisors. We have two energy advisors on today. It turns out uh, one of them is actually uh, mimicking me as Tony, <laughs> but that's Jason and Maxi. They're here to help answer questions at the Q&A. Uh, they've been answering a lot of those questions coming into Q&A. It's not me, it's them actually at answering for me for that. But these advisors, we are knowledgeable in technologies. Uh, we understand most of the programs. We understand the Home Plus. We can assist you with understanding the other programs. We can help you find a contractor that's participating in all three of these rebate programs. It's on our website, you, on our their contractor search tool. So we can help you get started if you have any questions. Call us at 866-878-6008 or go to our website. We actually have a new one, but Bayran Residential still works today or uh, Bayran slash resident will also work as well. And we can probably post that link in the chat in a moment. Next slide. Let's wrap up. So what does this mean for you? With Clean Power SF, your electricity is greener than it ever has been before. It's com almost completely carbon neutral. And going with the all green option, super green, you can get 100% renewable from them without doing anything else, but just switching over to them and make sure that you're using their all green option. You can add solar. That's another thing to help localize your energy production and keep it local. And remember, natural gas is a large part of our carbon footprint. So what you can do today for efficiency, so insulate, air seal your home to reduce what gas appliances are we using today will help long run because you're using less of it. And then when you get ready and get the chance, start replacing those gas appliances as soon as you can, budget wise, with the electric option. And our advisors are here to help you with that. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Tony. Um... So let me, uh, uh, I will go through these questions that have not been answered um, in the Q&A. Um, this is one, Annika, you may be able to answer. Um, I have solar panels, but at the time I didn't have an EV and no one seemed able to help me calculate how many panels I would need if I got an EV. Is there a way to add solar panels to an existing system once I get an EV? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can add, you know, from what I understand, I, I don't have personal experience with this, but from what I understand, you can add solar panels and people are doing that. Maybe Bayron has an answer on that. Does they focus a little more maybe on home? 
but I do, I do know people who have added more panels once they went, got an EV for sure. Um, somebody's asking here, how many amps is on the plugin EV for microwave, et cetera. Um, so you, what I know is that you can, um, with that small 300 watt inverter that I was demo, that I was showing, um, you can plug in small electrical appliances, probably not your microwave that probably, you know, heating takes, heating anything takes a lot of electricity. So um, probably not your microwave, definitely not your refrigerator, but a few of, you know, smaller things like your phones and your computers and string lights, that kind of thing. String lights. Yeah, I would, go ahead. I'll put into that. Thanks, Annika. Um, uh, one of the questions we come up with pretty often, this is Jason Green with the Bay Ridge Home Plus uh, Energy Advising Program. And one of the questions that come up pretty often is homeowners will say, I've got an old PV system and I want to upgrade it. Um, it's kind of hit or miss. I'd say if the manufacturers or the rate original installer is no longer around, most likely it's going to be hard, but your best bet in all reality is to reach out to certified electricians. They don't need to be solar uh, specialists. They just need to know electrical work. Um, and then they usually have a pretty good network of resource to find those old panels and to be able to tell the homeowner what is necessary. Otherwise, we see a lot of bias in folks saying, yeah, you need to replace your entire system. Um, or these are old and your inverters are bad and all sorts of stuff. So it's very hit or miss um, with what we see and it's worth the effort. I've definitely seen people upgrade older systems or they add on to it or maybe have to replace inverters or something like that. But um, it does happen from time to time and feel free to reach out to our program and we'll try to help you out. This is Tony Jung from the uh, Home Plus program. Uh, another note on the cars, the vehicle to load, these are just starting to become available. Uh, the the one with the EV6, I think, is the one that has a plug actually in there. At least it, it shows it on the foreign models. Uh, that no, there's a, no, it but, does. I, I, yeah. My friend has one and we were just demoing it at our last. Uh, yeah, e so there, there's a limited wattage there. So it, I, I've seen it work on a coffee coffee maker, but if you have a small enough microwave, it could work for that. The key thing is matching the wattage to the plug's capability for that. And, yeah. So they're just starting to become available. So it's a new idea. It's don't press it too far. It's just getting started, but in a couple of years, it'll become very regular. Absolutely. And I think for the Kia EV6, it's 1900 watts. So you can definitely plug in your refrigerator in you that, can, but you definitely want to check you, what, you know, yeah. the wattage on, on your appliance before plugging it in. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, next question. There may be a panel upgrade rebate, but PG&E wasn't willing to consider it. Um, I'm at 125 amps, but want to go higher to electrify. Will something be done to make it easier to upgrade? How about smart panels? Are you considering rebates for smart panels so upgrades might not be necessary? Uh, all I can say right now is that the, the Tech Clean California program, if you're upgrading your water heater to an electric heat pump, if you need to go to up to 200 amps or even add more space, like adding a sub panel, uh, for that. The $2,800 incentive is available if you're upgrading your water heater to an electric heat pump. That is something available if you're upgrading your water heater today. Uh, that might change in the future, you know, when they add it to the other heat pump measures. But right now, if you're upgrading a water heater, gas water heater to a heat pump water heater, you have the option with the with a tech contractor to get up to $2,800 toward that panel upgrade. So there is a there is an offer available from Tech Clean California, but you have it is currently restricted to heat pump water heater upgrades right now. So if you are looking at upgrading your panel uh, up to 200 amps, that is available, uh, and that can go toward whatever you do, whether you make it a smart panel to allow for circuit sharing. Uh, circuit sharing just as a concept means that two similar loads could be shared in the same circuit. So for instance, you have an electric dryer, you have your uh, EV. You're not gonna typically be running them both at the same time. So this sharing load, uh, it's a, a circuitry you can add to the panel or something you add to that. To the plug is that when you're charging your car, you don't run the electric dryer. When you're in the dryer, you just don't charge your car. So this circuit sharing allows you to have, still keep your same size panel. There are some homeowners with 100 amp panels with the right circuit sharing technology, they don't have to upgrade beyond 100 amps. It is possible to do it. You need a good electrician to look at your panel first and then look at your options. But it is possible for smaller homes that host 100 amp panels to electrify a lot of things without having to go up to 200 amps. 
All right, thank you. And I think we have time for one more question. Um, Tony, this one's for you. Is a tech clean contractor obligated to deduct the benefit from the original invoice or are they allowed to charge the full amount and then reimburse the customer when they receive the rebate? Uh, my understanding of the uh, tech clean California program is that the contractors do have to offer the full discount to the homeowner. Typically it's either offered at the estimate time, uh, but sometimes they might just, you know, say they'll, as soon as they get the rebate, they pass it directly back to you. Uh, I think there's some, typically that the way I've, I've understood it is that I'm not part of that program, so I don't have full knowledge, but uh, my understanding is that the program requires that those contractors participate in tech clean California have to give that full amount. So if you're doing a heat pump water heater, that $1,800, all of that goes to the homeowner. Uh, usually the best way is to do it up front so you get a lower bid from that contractor. In other words, you get, the instant, you get an instant discount at the, at the bid time uh, for that. That's the way I understood it's supposed to be run. Uh, if there's any variations of it, I'm not sure of all the subtleties. This is where reaching out to a tech contractor and ask them how, they, how you would take, get that rebate from them. Uh, I think each of them might have a slightly different answer, but this is the way I understood it's supposed to be run. All right, well, thank you. And thank you everyone for attending. I realize we did not get to everyone's questions. I wanna make sure that we do answer your questions. I will follow up with everyone with an email tomorrow with links to the resources mentioned today um, with the recording of the webinar and then contact information, including my own um, for the various topics that we covered today. So highly encourage you then to email your questions over to us. All right, that is all, thank you.